Welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I will be focusing on the Garage Tutorial version 2.0. There are now two options to do in this tutorial. There's a sensor and sensorless version. The sensor version allows you to know if your garage is open or closed. The sensor version is represented with the door sensor because it uses a similar sensor and tells you the actual position of your garage if it is open or closed. This is actually really helpful and can save you in a few situations. In fact, if you have an Apple TV, it'll actually be able to report your garage door status even when you're not on your network. This will allow you to even close it. If you don't have an Apple TV, even while you're at home, you can know if your garage is open or closed. The sensorless version is represented with an SD card because of the way it functions. It just reports the default value of open, which it retrieves from the memory. If you are a novice to the hap-node.js and everything in this new project sequence, I suggest you do the sensorless version because the sensor version ha does have some complex cabling that I wouldn't suggest to a beginner. But I wish you best of luck and uh, hope you succeed in this project. In order to go to the project you want to, just click on which one you want to go to. If you're on an iPad or a mobile device, Scroll to the time that's under each of the images. Hey guys, and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to connect your garage door opener to hap-node.js. This installation doesn't use a sensor, so hap-node.js will not be able to detect the current position of your garage it's open or closed. Okay, first you want to make sure you have hap nodejs installed, you have an active network connection, and everything is secure. So, first the command you want to run is sudo wget goo.gl slash 2ky X A Z and you just want to click enter and so this is actually going to download the script that will run the installation and there you can go it says it has saved the script so the next one to run is sudo s h 2 k y x a z and you just want to hit and there you can see it's going through. So actually, so just let this run for a few minutes. It might take a while. So I'm actually going to speed through this. And once this is done, you should just see a message that says done with installation. And so then you can continue to the wiring section. So this is my garage door button. Ensure that that cable, follow that cable all the way up to your garage door. I have that cable circle, you should have similar. So this is a picture of my garage door. Those cables entered the red and the first white terminal as shown. It depends on the garage you have. So here I pulled out the wires that were connected to those terminals. Those were connecting to the button. And so now I took some home theater cable I had lying around in my house and connected some to it. So I connected two different strands of the home theater cable to those two ends. And now you want to put those back into the garage door. Make sure they're not touching. So you just want to make sure all the cables are secure. Now we're at the Raspberry Pi and the relay board. So. I'm going to be showing you. So first you want to take your relay board and loosen up the terminals at the K2 relay. So you want to loosen up the last two terminals. So here, let me loosen it up. 
So I'm loosening it up. And so now you want to take those two strands of wires. So here they are. Those are the ones that came from my garage. I just have a white sheet on the floor of my garage so I could record this nicely. And you want to put those in. Make sure they go in pretty nicely. And you just want to quickly tighten it up. Um, there you go. And so if you pull it out, it shouldn't come out. But if they do come out, you want to loosen it back up and put it back in. Make sure the wires are all straight because you, you don't want both ends touching or else your garage is going to be open in the middle of the night. So then you want to put it back in, open it up, tighten it up, sorry. And if you do the pull, oh, I am kind of bad at this. So if you are bad at it too, just if you have too much of the uh, cable, just fold it up a bit. And so then you want to loosen it up again. And you want to put it back in. There you go. So you just want to put it back in. There you go. And now that it's secure, you want to tighten it up very nicely. Make sure it's a firm tight. And so now if you pull the cable, there we go. It's not coming up. Next, you want to do the same cable. If you have a little too much, if you stripped a little too much of the cable, you'd want to fold the excess so it becomes thick bit thicker so it's easier to insert and also has more volume to be held. So you just want to put that inside and you want to tighten that up. These screws are really tiny. I'm going to have all the materials in the comments by the way. So now if you tighten it in, there you go. If you pull it, they don't come out. So there you go. And so now for the connecting the relay board to the Raspberry Pi, you want to rotate it. Make sure the pins are lined up. GND in one in two and VCC so first we're gonna be doing the ground so take a jumper cable that you have so take the jumper cable connect it to GND GND ensure GND make sure the connection is tight as well and you want to connect that to pin 6 on your Raspberry Pi pin 6 there you go to know which pin make sure the USB is on the right side Next, you're going to connect the VCC. There you go. I'm using yellow. And you want to connect that to pin 2 of your Raspberry Pi, the 5 volts. So next, we're going to connect the in 2 of the relay board. So here I've taken another jumper cable. This time it's blue. And I've connected it to in 2 on the relay board. And you want to connect that to the Raspberry Pi pin 26 so if you're on counting carefully to pin 26 there we go there's pin 26 and you want to ensure that's firmly in and if you want you can do a pull test but I know jumper cables are safe and that's the end of that okay so now we want to start half dash node.js so we'll be able to pair with it so ensure you have forever installed. I'll have the link below to install forever because it makes running half dash node.js a lot easier. So first you want to run the command sudo oops forever stop all. And so just give it a few seconds. And there you go, it's done. So uh, then you want to go to the hap, then you want to go to the CD, and then you want to go to hap-node.js. Okay, and so here you can see it shows I'm in hap-node.js. So the command we want to run really depends on your setup. So if you're pairing all your devices with a common bridge and you, pair, you run sudo node bridged core.js use that if you regularly do just do sudo node core.js uh, core use core.js so to start forever you're in sudo forever start core.js if you use core.js or bridged core.js okay oops yeah there we go so whichever one you regularly use, run that. So in my case, I used 
bridge, uh, bridged core.js and just click enter. And there you go. And it started it. So now we have started it. We can go to our phone and start the pairing process. Okay, so now we're in the HomeKit app we used in a previous tutorial to install. Okay, so you want to go to the Configure tab, select your home, click Add Accessory, and there you can see Garage Door Opener. You want to click on it, click Add, click Add Anyway, give it a few seconds, and now it says Enter Code Manually at the bottom. You just want to click that, and now enter your code. The default code is 31 and there you can see it says accessories successfully added. Okay, so you just want to click info, and there you can see make sure. Just want to click into it, click Lift Master Garage, and I do have a sensor wired, so it is saying current door current door status is closed and target door status is closed, and you can click open if you'd like it to open. That is because it is mine and it is wired, but if yours is not wired, it'll just say open and you just use Siri. So in order to show it in your favorites and quickly access the information, you here want to put the star next to both of them so you can quickly see the state. There it is. So let's try it with Siri. Is my garage door open? And there you can see. Hey guys, and welcome to another Quick Pie tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to go over the garage door installation with a sensor. So with the sensor, you'll be able to tell if your garage is open or closed. It does require some more work. But in the end, it is a great advantage because you know if it's working or not. So the first thing you want to do is run the command sudo wget goo dot, oops, dot gl slash kytkkw. You want to copy this exact link. Oops. You want to run that exact link and hit enter and see so you're gonna see this is running and um, what this is doing is this is connecting to my github and downloading an installation script the installation script you can go to the link right here if you want to go and look at the installation script so the, but it is just it goes through downloads the programs downloads all the necessities make sure everything is there and then ensures that all the files are there and it's a lot easier process for you but you do need to ensure you have hap-node.js installed you can use my previous tutorial for that and you also need to make sure your iPhone has the HomeKit app which you can also use in one of my other previous tutorials depending on which iOS version you are on iOS 8 or iOS 9 those two tutorials are available so as you can see it has said saved and it's given me back my terminal commands. So next you can run the command sudo sh and then you want to type in kytkkw and you want to hit enter. And so this is going to run and you're going to see it's actually going through. It's going to make sure everything is up to date. So this can take some time. And so 
This is an average garage door. So as you can see, it's a rectangle. You might have mirrors, you might have multiple sections. It might be one piece. Regardless, regular garage door. So this is from the inside, your garage door. Here you have rails for the garage to move up and down. This is the, this is the garage engine, motor, whatever you like to call it. That, that's what it is. Um, that pulls the garage up and down with the chain. And uh, the most optimum place for the garage position is here. Oops. Let me select the annotation tool. Is here. Oh boy. Oh, let's just ignore that. <laughs> here, here, or here. You usually get the most optimum sensor readings in these areas, so that's why I highly suggest you use this. So I'm just going to take an example garage picture with a lot better. And so here's the, and some example garage I found online. So the owner wanted to use, oh, yellow. I wanted to use the garage area up here. So let's zoom up quite a bit into that. So here we have a closed section. We can see there's a wood piece. It's pretty shut. Good insulation. Good install. So let's see how the sensor should be placed. So this, okay, sorry for the bad image. It wasn't really that high resolution. But this is what you should do. From the previous wiring part of the tutorial, you want the sensor to be connected to your home wall so that even if the garage moves up and down, it stays in one position. And then you want the magnet to be as close as possible to the sensor, but on the garage and make sure they have a little clearance or even meeting, but you don't want the meeting because it could cause some friction. So as close as possible, so they're there. So it works well because it needs to be able to detect this magnet. So that would be, and actually I found an image online with the sensor on the left side on this section I actually found an image where the garage or the homeowner installed the similar sensor with it on this side and so people who are looking to do a side install this would be very helpful for them so this is the one I said like before on top that's what I use my sensor as I've had fully consistent readings and this is the sensor so this homeowner decided so you can see it's a very similar sensor uh, com, no, and some other thing, and then open. Yeah. So you should be connecting your cable to the com and the not open. This is what it stands for. I found out, figured it out. I totally forgot it. Not open sensor portion. So they should both be connected. Your cables should be connected to this. And here you can see the sensor. As you can see, there's also very little gap. And that's how you want to place your sensor. And so uh, th this is your sensors. So this is the part that connects to your door and this is the part that stays on your wall. Basically it's a magnet sensor and this is a magnet. So whenever the magnet close com clo comes close by, it detects it and sends a signal to the Raspberry Pi. And so this is a magnet and this is just basically the sensor to detect the magnet. That's basically the simple essence of what the sensor is doing. So to connect the sensor to your Raspberry Pi, we have sort of complex wiring system. So you have, there are three connections on the actual sensor, but you only use two of them. You use a port called COM and another port called NO. Uh, I know COM stands for communication. I'm not sure what NO stands for, so don't ask me on that one. I think it stays for not open. I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, so the wiring we want to do is we want to connect NO to pin 14 which is ground now i know most of you are going to ask how am i supposed to do that so there's no wiring on the sensor for sure it's just a terminal so you want to connect audio cable to no okay no the same audio theater cable you're using to connect the relay to your garage door opener same cable and connect that to pin 14. whoa wait a minute how do i connect an audio cable to pin 14 doesn't make sense so you just want to connect a jumper and an audio cable together using a wiretap expose the ends you guys know the deal 
if you're doing the sensor, it's really advanced. I would suggest you have some technical expertise because then you would understand and you would create a connection between these. Actually, in the upper illustration where we connect it to the COM port, we actually have a better idea. So first you want to connect, so we're going to start with the 10 kilo ohm resistor section. And so you want to connect the 3.3 volt connection to a jumper cable. You're going to use a jumper cable and connect that to a wire tap, which also is mixed with a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So you're going to connect the 10, the 3.3 volt jumper cable, exposed ends, you guys know the deal, with a 10 kilo ohm resistor and use a wire nut to make sure the connection is secure. Then you want to use a 12 on pin, you want to use a jumper cable to pin 12 and connect that to a 1 kilo ohm resistor using a wire tap. Expose the end of the jumper cable, make sure it's usable. And you want to connect these with a wire tap. So now you have a 10 kilo ohm resistor coming and a 1 kilo ohm resistor coming, but you need to connect both of those to com, the COM port on the sensor. Whoa, how do we do that? So uh, we just want to use audio cable, make sure the ends are exposed, and connect that, the 10 kilo ohm resistor, and the 1 kilo ohm resistor, all three together with a wire nut. So in total, you should be using actually four wire nuts because you're going to be using a jumper cable and the audio cable connecting ground. So you're going to have four wire nuts all connecting to the sensor. One of them is a direct connection to the NO port of the sensor. The other three are used to connect to the COM port. So with this done, you should actually be able to get sensor readings on the Raspberry Pi. Now, for the sensor, we're actually in the next slide, I'm actually going to be showing you the positioning of where you can do with the door sensor. But make sure they're not more than one eighth of an inch apart. So when your garage door is closed, this should be within one eighth of an inch. So make sure that the, the clearance between it is not a lot and it should be able to immediately pick up the sensor. And if you guys have done that, you guys have successfully wired it. So this is my garage door button. Ensure that that cable, follow that cable all the way up to your garage door. I have that cable circle, you should have some more. So this is a picture of my garage door. Those cables entered the red and the first white terminal as shown. It depends on the garage you have. So here I pulled out the wires that were connected to those terminals. Those were connecting to the button. And so now I took some home theater cable I had lying around in my house and connected some to it. So I connected two different strands of the home theater cable to those two ends. And now you want to put those back into the garage door. Make sure they're not touching. So you just want to make sure all the cables are secure. Now we're at the Raspberry Pi and the relay board. So I'm going to be showing you. So first you want to take your relay board and loosen up the terminals at the K2 relay. So you want to loosen up the last two terminals. So here, let me loosen it up. So I'm loosening it up. And so now you want to take those two strands of wires. So here they are. Those are the ones that came from my garage. I just have a white sheet on the floor of my garage so I could record this nicely. And you want to put those in. Make sure they go in pretty nicely. And you just want to quickly tighten it up. There you go. And so if you pull it out, it shouldn't come out. But if they do come out, you want to loosen it back up and put it back in. Make sure the wires are all straight because you, you don't want both ends touching or else your garage is going to be open in the middle of the night. So then you want to put it back in. Tighten it up. Tighten it up, sorry. And if you do the pull, oh, I am kind of bad at this, so... If you are bad at it too, just if you have too much of the uh, cable, just fold it up a bit. And so then you want to loosen it up again. And you want to put it back in. There you go. So you just want to put it back in. There you go. And now that it's secure, you want to tighten it up very nicely. Make sure it's a firm tight. And so now if you pull the cable, there we go, it's not coming up. Next, you want to do the same cable. If you have a little too much, if you stripped a little too much of the cable, 
you'd want to fold the excess so it becomes a thick, bit thicker so it's easier to insert and also has more volume to be held. So you just want to put that inside and you want to tighten that up. These screws are really tiny. I'm going to have all the materials in the comments by the way. So now if you tighten it in, there you go. If you pull them, they don't come out. So there you go. And so now for the connecting the relay board to the Raspberry Pi, you want to rotate it. Make sure the pins are lined up. GND in one, in two, and VCC. So first we're going to be doing the ground. So take a jumper cable that you have. So take the jumper cable, connect it to GND. GND, ensure. GND, make sure the connection is tight as well. And you want to connect that to pin six on your Raspberry Pi. Pin six, there you go. To know which pin, make sure the USB is on the right side. Next, you're going to connect the VCC. There you go, I'm using yellow. And you want to connect that to pin two of your Raspberry Pi, the five volts. So next, we're going to connect the in two of the relay board. So here I've taken another jumper cable. This time it's blue. I've connected it to in two on the relay board. And you want to connect that to the Raspberry Pi pin 26. So here I'm counting carefully to pin 26. There you go. There's pin 26. And you want to ensure that's firmly in. And if you want, you can do a pull test, but I know jumper cables are safe. And that's the end of that. Okay, so now we want to start hap-node.js so we'll be able to pair with it. So ensure you have forever installed. I'll have the link below to install forever because it makes running hap-node.js a lot easier. So first you want to run the command sudo oops, forever stop all. And so just give it a few seconds. And there you go, it's done. So uh, then you want to go to the hap, then you want to go to the cd, and then you want to go to hap-node.js. Okay, and so here you can see it shows I'm in hap-node.js. So the command we want to run really depends on your setup. So if you're pairing all your devices with a common bridge and you, pair, you run sudo node bridged core.js, use that. If you regularly do just do sudo node core.js, uh, core use core.js. So to start forever, you're in sudo forever start core.js, if you use core.js, or bridged core.js. Okay? Oops. Yeah, there we go. So whichever one you regularly use, run that. So in my case, I used bridge, uh, bridged core.js and just click enter. And there you go. And it started it. So now we've started it. We can go to our phone and start the pairing process. Okay, so now we're in the HomeKit app we used in a previous tutorial to install. Okay, so you want to go to the Configure tab, select your home, click Add Accessory, and there you can see Garage Door Opener. You want to click on it, click Add, click Add Anyway, give it a few seconds, and now it says Enter Code Manually at the bottom. You just want to click that, and now enter your code. The default code is 03145154. And there you can see it says accessories successfully added. Okay, so you just want to click info, and there you can see make sure. Just want to click into it, click lift master garage. And I do have a sensor wired, so it is saying current door current door status is closed and target door status is closed and you can click open if you'd like it to open. 
that is because it is mine and it is wired but if yours is not wired it'll just say open and you just use Siri so in order to show it in your favorites and quickly access the information you here want to put the star next to both of them so you can quickly see the state there it is so let's try it with Siri is my garage door open and there you can see